When I came to this, uh, uh, my first job was covering City Hall. And one day, uh, I think it was Vera Carson in interview, then I saw this amazing uh, woman. So I asked my colleague, I said, who is that? She would walk with the gale and the grace of uh, a very substantive woman in charge. You can see that. She, her old man was like, I don't care what you think. I am just going to like, <laughs> just take all this space. And they said she was gay Castillo. And I said to myself, I was just two months, just came from, and finished my journalism degree. Six months, I got a job. I was covering uh, the city hall uh, for the Observer newspapers. And uh, I have been watching Gail. I watched Gail for 10 years. So when I found her the league, it was, she was the first people I called. And she came and gave orders and laid down the orders and the part to take. And I said, I don't know if I can do this. But time and time again, she took Hispanic Chamber of Commerce from one point to another, from one uh, staff to another. She grew the chamber, and my admiration for her never stopped. And I look around our communities, and I said, who is that that has been founding things, that have been doing things as a woman of color? And has the best, they said, Gay Castillo. So the board recognize her tonight. Please help us recognize Gay Castillo. So first of all, thank you so much. Thank you for the recognition especially among this wo wonderful group of people. Uh, Barbara and I have worked together. Uh, we brought together a conference, a national conference, and another governor from another state. And, and in fact, I've worked with many of you that are in this room. Loretta is another one. We worked together when you were at Wyden's office. So um, just a little bit about the chamber, because that's what I'm being recognized for tonight, although I'm also, uh, our family owns Canopy, which provides mental health services and wellness services. I have here our, our family and also members of our board of directors from the Hispanic Chamber. <laughs> so we're, thank you. We're celebrating our 30th year. So I was two when I started the chamber. <laughs> uh, I'm 32 now. Um, proud of it. <laughs> um, our, our vision at that time, again, this is not news to you, but, you know, uh, during that time, like now, we were being put down as a community, you know, we're all drug dealers, we're all, you know, undocumented, et cetera. I was born here, et cetera. There are many people. We, we are here, like you said, and we're here to stay, and we're contributing. Um, <laughs> But there wasn't re much recognition of the fact of what our contributions were. So we wanted to highlight the contributions, and we also wanted to highlight the, the and recognize our young people. So we gave the first year one scholarship. Uh, since then, we've given over $3 million in scholarships to students throughout the state and Southwest Washington. Uh, we wanted to recognize small business owners that create jobs, buy, uh, pay taxes, uh, buy services and, and supplies, purchase properties, purchase homes, support their families, support their communities. So we've served over several thousand uh, business, small businesses to help them start and to expand. The other thing that we've done, we, we looked around and we knew that they were just like one little supervisor over here, one little manager over there, maybe an assistant vice president at the time. 
So we wanted to build the capacity of our community. So we started doing leadership training. So I think we're now class 20, uh, and each class is a group of, tw of 20 people, and we give them leadership skills and management skills, and we create a cohort to support them. None of this was done in isolation. We are a community, all of us. Uh, I look to members of our community to assist us, and be, to be very honest, the response day one was overwhelming. They said it's about time that you do all the things that you've described, and now we've done it. But we've worked with private sector, we've worked with public sector, other nonprofits, elected officials, uh, asked for their, for their support and individuals. Um, where am I going with this? We're, tonight, we're talking about elected officials. There are so many problems, and none of you, whoever's elected, can do it on your own. I think we've made that point tonight, whether you call it bipartisan, whether you, whatever. Uh, we need to respect women. <laughs> we need to respect all communities. There are so many problems to attack, so all that I would ask of whoever is elected, please work for the greater good. It's not about any party whatsoever. It's about our community. It's about our national community as well as our local community. So thank you and I wish you the best because the challenges that we have in front of us are severe. And the, the vision that we have in our communities throughout our country, and of course we know internationally there are issues uh, which were reflected locally, uh, are tremendous. So all I ask is please work with your colleagues, whoever they are, and please say, solve the problems for the greater good of the community, not just your party. Thank you so much. I hope we